what's really interesting is that all of the musicians are carrying their instruments. That mobility enabling everybody to go different places of the stage was like, okay, how are we going to be able to show this? Hi, this is David Byrne. Hi, I'm Ellen Curis. I'm the cinematographer. This is Variety's Making a Scene, and we're going to be talking about David Byrne's American Utopia. This show that will be back on Broadway very soon, we hope, uh, was running in 2019 into 2020, if you can believe that. It's not just me center stage with a bunch of backing musicians kind of in the shadows in the back. Sometimes I go in the back and the musicians are forefront. Sometimes there's all kinds of movement going on with the musicians and they're kind of interacting with one another. And I'm kind of doing one thing and they're doing something else. There's lots and lots of stuff going on at the same time. Even a live audience sometimes misses a lot of it because there's so much happening. You're kind of experiencing the whole thing. One of the benefits of being in this business for so long and having crossed paths with people over the years is I had Spike's phone number in my phone. So I could text Spike Lee and say, Spike, I want you to come and see our show. He called me afterwards and I was in Toronto and of course, it was, must have been, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night, which is not unusual for Spike to call me at that hour. Alan, 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 I just saw the most amazing show. He says, we got to do it. We got to film it. You got to do it with me. It was the kind of thing that when I first saw it, I was really amazed at what you were talking about of the, so much activity going on on the stage. But everything was so well thought out in terms of all of your beats. And the big thing that I think that we use is breaking the fourth wall. Spike really wanted to bring us inside of the performance. So to break the fourth wall, meaning that in, in a way, the camera is able to go where the audience was not able to go. Oh that particular song uh, it alternates from sections where it's really focused on me, this character kind of stumbling and bumbling and trying to figure out what is my life about. Then it's the choruses uh, of the song. The band comes up from upstage and they just kind of, whoom, they all come to the front. Matches the feeling of the song where the choruses are very uplifting to all the questioning and, and confusion of the verses. And then you have these moments where I fall backwards I'm caught by some of the other performers and they kind of push me forward again. And they kind of like, go back out there and deal with it kind of thing. You may find yourself behind the wheel of a large automobile. You may find yourself in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife. You may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? Part of the song, the verses, of course, were inspired by some radio preachers that I'd been listening to at the time. I was really um, interested in the passion in their voices. Obviously, there's a lot of passion there, but also the kind of rhythmic sense in a, in a preacher's voice. It, it falls somewhere between speaking and singing. It's kind of in this middle ground. I just love the way Rob Sinclair just had the top lighting coming down so that David, with abandon, you know, stumbling around the stage. It was so incredibly beautiful and profound. We use this uh, kind of lighting technology. I think it's called Black Tracks, infrared tracking system. So that the light, the moving lights can actually follow me. I've got little infrared things in the shoulders of my jacket. Rob used that a lot in that song so that I could stumble wherever I went on stage. I could kind of stagger around and the light would follow me exactly. A spot operator would be like going out of their mind, trying to follow my erratic movements. There's a certain kind of energy there. And Spike and I talked about how we were going to get that, about being able to bring a steady cam in, how we were going to do it with fixed cameras from outside to be able to complement 
that feeling that David was trying was was conveying as he was going across the stage. So the audience being in front in the proscenium, then I was able to take the camera behind. We were behind the scenes. So there's lots of shots that take us so that we feel like we're with the performers. So it has a different kind of flip where we feel like we're not only listening to what's being said, but we're listening with. And I think that's a really important part of this whole film is that we feel like we're participating. The movement and the way it's staged that way is very much part of how the story that's being told. Exactly. It really kind of, it's not just in kind of the song or me singing, it's all this stuff together. Annie B. Parsons really brought so much meaning to how everybody was moving on stage. The choreography works in concert with the music, with the words, with how the performers are moving and the camera and all of us together sort of took into account every performer had a different color. So you could see it was almost like an exosketch diagram of where you went in and where the other performers went. And they were works of art in themselves. I mean, they were really amazing because I really showed you the choreography from, from an abstract position from above, so to speak. It couldn't be forward. It needed to be directly over and a nodal position so we could turn it if we wanted to, but it made a graphic of what was happening below. So in a way, you were making art on stage to the audience, but also making art from above in the way that Annie had you all moving around in, in certain designs. No wires anywhere on stage to trip over, which meant now, now we can move anywhere. But the whole stage is like a blank canvas for us to move. And uh, our bodies become what the show is about. It's not about stuff that you're looking at. You're looking at us. And to me, that by taking the stuff away, I realized it made the show more powerful uh, because the audience now is looking at human beings. Janelle Monet, I asked her, what do you think of this? You know, an older white man singing this song. She loved the idea. So I thought, okay, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go ahead with this. And although I said kind of the show does not name a lot of names, that song certainly does name names. It's all about reciting the names, kind of a eulogy for people we've lost. It comes almost at the end of the show. If there's a narrative, this is a part where we performers on stage have it within ourselves now to engage with the larger community, to kind of become socially engaged rather than just trying to figure ourselves out. Now we're trying to engage with everybody, with the, the larger world. Uh, and this that song kind of represents that. I think it's why so many people, when they saw this, this American utopia was so moved by it. It was, you know, it came out at such an appropriate time for all of us. We needed to hear that hope. We needed to be able to ask the questions. We needed to be able to ask ourselves, you know, what do we see as the future? What are, what are ways that we can go to make our lives better lives here on earth? And those are the bigger questions to me that are so exciting that you see happened in the piece. And David is taking us through this whole journey. I can't tell you for me personally, it was a personal journey. And, and uh, so I hope that, you know, as many people can see it as they possibly can.